And so if we begin our starting point like this, it's not very likely that you're going to deadlift 400 pounds by the age of 22. Coach Greg, in today's video, guy, you got no muscle, you don't train hard. And so we got this kid, he's 18 years of age, and he's 6 feet 1 inches tall. He weighs in at just over 60 kilograms, about 132 pounds. And so because he doesn't have a lot of muscle, the fact that he's not very strong, people think he doesn't train harder than last time. The problem is he does, and he proves it. He's been going to the gym, training day after day, year after year. He's even sponsored. He's got videos with Joe Fazier, the muscle man himself, who I say is a natural. And so here's the thing. When you don't have a lot of muscle, people assume that you don't train hard, that there's no way you're using performance enhancing drugs. Joe Fazier, for example, six foot four, weighing under 200 pounds, people see his physique and think, oh, 100% natural. It has to be. There's no way he would take anything. And so years ago, I did in fact believe he was natural. I later said, nope, I don't think he's natural. Remember, he might be natural. This is just my opinion. But for the most part, if you don't have amazing genetics, you're not going to have an amazing physique. No matter how hard you train, it's not easy putting muscle on in the gym. And so we have him doing the deadlift. <laughs> And so he's got the crowd cheering for him. Post, new deadlift PR at FIC times Marshall Massey event. Whatever that is. And so he's deadlifting approximately 155 pounds. New deadlift PR. But here's the thing. What if he started at 45 pounds? Not everyone can deadlift 300 pounds in their first attempt. It takes years to build up that strength. I remember at my first powerlifting competition, I only deadlifted 355 pounds. I was 22 years of age. I'd been training for 12 years. That was my one rep max, and it was a PR. I did it in a competition. I benched 341.7. It was literally a world record at the time, lifted more than all juniors my age. Weighed in 148 pounds. Think of it. I could almost out bench press my deadlift. How many people can do that? But think of this. Years later, I eventually set the Guinness record deadlift for deadlifts in a minute. 405 pounds, 50 times in 50 seconds. In comparison, when I was 22, even with 12 years of training, I could not even get that for one rep. And so you have to start somewhere. And so if we begin our starting point like this, it's not very likely that you're going to deadlift 400 pounds by the age of 22. Think of it. The guy's 18. It takes time. Perhaps he doesn't have amazing genetics. Maybe he has very poor genetics. And so many people think, oh, he's just not eating enough. He's not training hard enough. He doesn't follow a regular workout. Nothing could be further from the truth. Just because you don't have a lot of muscle doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. To the opposite extent, you can have the guy the same exact age, doesn't go to the gym and only eat shit food and deadlifts twice as much as him. Why is that? Genetics. Awesome meeting Nathaniel Masaya at my Protein Origin event at RT Fit. And so compared to Nathaniel Masaya, look at the difference in size. He's literally double this guy's size. And so what it goes to show is you don't have to have an amazing physique. You don't have to have a chisel six pack to be a fitness influencer. Consider this, Brantley G, sponsored by Harder Than Last Time. The guy used to weigh close to 600 pounds, but he's now under 400 pounds. He is a fitness influencer. And so you don't need to have the perfect body, the perfect chisel six pack. You don't need to look like Chris freaking Bumstead to be a fitness influencer. Not everyone has the same genetics. Some people's genetics are to be big, aka Brantley G. Some people's genetics are to be smaller like Jack Fitz. And so here he is flexing with Joe Fazier. And so you can clearly see Joe dwarfing this guy. This kid is six foot one. He makes Coach Greg look like a manlet. But in comparison, Joe Fazier, six foot four. And people don't think he has a lot of muscle. Look at the size of Joe Fazier. I personally don't even think that is natural. Just because certain guys look bigger than that natural doesn't mean that Joe and So did. this is the result of hard training the gym and eating effectively. Not everyone joins the gym and puts on 20 pounds in 30 days like fit should. And so, for example, harder than last time athlete Peter Messitz, who goes by the name Pepo.workout on Instagram, the guy doesn't have a ton of muscle, but he has a rare skin disease. It makes it very hard for him to train, but he doesn't give up. He keeps putting in the work. He trains harder than last time. And so just because you don't have the best genetics in the world doesn't mean you can't get better than you are today. And so my advice, stop comparing yourself to other people. 
Ask yourself, can you do better today than you did tomorrow? Can you do better tomorrow than you did today? By comparing yourself to yourself and not to anybody else, that is how you can truly make gains. If you continue to compare yourself to others, you're never going to be happy. You are always going to find somebody that's better than you. And so please stop doing this. And so you can clearly see it's not going to be fast progress. He has some muscle in his legs, but not all that much. But imagine him in 10 years. You might be thinking, I need to put on 20 pounds in 30 days. It's not going to happen. Take your time. This is Get Jacked with Jack, episode five, the daily series where I track my fitness journey as a skinny guy bulking. And so he's a skinny guy bulking. He's trying to put on size. If you're a single digit body fat or you're not eating enough or you have low energy or you've been over dieting for years, you, for example, could be like Tristan Lee, under 5% body fat. You clearly need to eat more. And so if you're not putting on any weight, remember, it comes down to calories in, calories out. If you're not eating any surplus, you're not going to gain any weight. And so try to eat more. For the most part, most people, they're already eating too much. But there's certain percentage of people, perhaps 5% of people out there, they're not eating enough. For breakfast today, we're cooking two fried eggs. Yes, yeah, so one of the yolks broke, so instead I made scrambled eggs on toast. Loads of protein. Actually, no. And so I do believe you could get better advice. You have two whole eggs. Two whole eggs has perhaps 15 grams of protein. In two slices of bread, probably about five. That's 20 grams of protein. That is barely the minimum amount. My advice, get in a minimum of 30 grams of protein in each and every meal. You're starting out your day, your breakfast. You haven't eaten for a while. You've just clearly fasted. Think of it. You're eating breakfast. Break from a fast. You've fasted. This should be a very large meal. You're eating two slices of bread, two whole eggs, and some oil. It's not enough. You need to eat more. My advice, have four eggs. Eat more. Why not eat something else? For example, some fruits, some vegetables, have more variety. So if you're not gaining any weight, very important to eat more calories than last time. Okay, now I'm off to the gym just to like breakfast, but when I get home, I'm going to eat like there's no tomorrow. And so easier said than done, I'm going to eat like there's no tomorrow when I get home from the gym. Personally, myself, when I train harder than last time, particular, if I'm doing cardio, I'm not hungry for hours. When I do a lot of cardio, it blunts my appetite. And so for me, if I'm trying to bulk, it would be smarter for me to eat more calories before I do the cardio. Because if I wait till too late in the day, perhaps I'm not going to get in those calories. And so remember, there are five opportunities for muscle protein synthesis to occur. You want to maximize all those opportunities. If you're fasting, skipping, meals and so on, you're not going to build as much muscle as if you're eating more frequently. You should be at a minimum eating three times per day and one gram of protein per pound of body weight. He weighs approximately 132 pounds and she should be eating 132 grams of protein. If he had 20 grams of protein for breakfast, he would have to eat six and a half meals to equal 130 grams. And so clearly he's under eating protein for breakfast. He should consume more calories and perhaps he could consume some calories while he's at the gym. The first exercise of the day is hack squats. And today I decided to up the weight. Today I did 15 kg on hat squats. And let's just say I definitely felt it. And look at the effort he's putting in. You're thinking he's not training hard enough. He's clearly training close to failure. And he's only 18. When you're a new lifter, a beginner, you don't need to train to failure or beyond to put on muscle in the gym. You just simply need progressive overload. If you start out easy and the next time you're not sore, you can go a little bit harder. But if you notice that you're training and you're sore, you're going to the gym and the next day you can feel the muscles that they're very sore, you're probably training too hard. And so in that case, I would suggest you train easier than last time. Then I moved on to leg press. In today's session, I did 45 kg on leg press. But to be honest, it didn't feel too bad. I could have probably gone for 50 kg. And so notice, he said it didn't feel too bad. I progressed in weight. I used 45 kg. Felt like I could have used 50. So what is he going to do? The next time he goes to the gym, he's going to up the weight and go with 50 kilograms. That is exactly how you make gains. He's going to use progressive overload. That is literally training harder than last time in the gym. And so when he notices the weights not too hard, not too difficult, he ups the weight or ups the intensity. And so it says he's on the road to 60 kilograms. He's only 57 kilograms in this video. Remember, I've already watched future videos and he was in fact 60.6 kilograms. That means he gained over 3.3 kilograms. That's over seven pounds. And so he's clearly doing things right. Put on seven pounds training in the gym. And so you can see he clearly does not have a lot of muscle, but he says there's no this without this. And he shows you the training he's doing. The lunging, the leg extensions, all the pressing. He's training harder than last time. He's pushing himself in the gym and he's trying to eat in a calorie surplus. He knows what he's doing. He's going to keep progressing and please go and follow him on his journey. Remember, it's not just about watching jack guys get more jacked. Guy's literal name is Jack, but he isn't jacked yet. 
It's going to take him longer than most people, but he's determined to get the results by training harder than last time continuously and not for weeks or months, for years. And so here's the thing. I watch so many videos of people gaining 20 pounds in 30 days and so on. You're seeing the best of the best, the best genetics in the world. And you're thinking, how come I don't live up to that? It's you have to stop comparing yourself to other people. And so you can see just how determined he is. He's pushing himself in the gym. And so the people saying you're not training hard enough, what is wrong with you? And so here's one thing I'm going to advise him. He's doing his cardio, which is amazing. I say this 150 minutes a week, but he's choosing the worst possible form of cardio if your goal is to build muscle. He's going for runs. He's jogging. There is such an eccentric load on the muscle. The more you run, the harder it is to build muscle, in particular in the legs. And so if your goal is to put on as much muscle as possible, I highly suggest you switch from running to other forms of cardio that are not as weight-bearing. For example, bike riding, the elliptical, swimming, cross-country skiing. These are less hard on the joints, going to allow you to recover faster. So imagine this, you're running for several miles, and then you're hitting the weights of the gym. Your body is getting damaged from both the running as well as the lifting weights. It can't recover from both. It's too much. You're perhaps overtraining. So if your goal is to be a marathon runner while having a jack physique at the same time, you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to pick one. You can be a jack of all trades, literally jack. He's running and lifting weights, but you're probably not going to be as good at either. So if you want to build the most muscle possible, I highly suggest you switch from running to other forms of cardio. This is Road to 60kg, episode 3. Today I weighed myself and I'm 56.4 kg. And so on this day, he's only 56.4 kilograms. Remember, not every day are you going to gain weight. Not every day are you going to lose weight. Whether you're on a weight gain or weight loss journey, the weights are going to fluctuate. My suggestion, weigh yourself every day, at least five days a week. Take the median weight. That's the middle number. You cross off the two highs and the two lows, you're left with the middle number. You can compare that from one week to the next week. That's going to give you a much more accurate representation of what you actually weigh. There are going to be daily weight fluctuations this is 100% normal. Does not mean you're doing anything wrong. And so please don't panic if you see your weight go up or down on any given day. And so for breakfast, breaking the fast, what is he eating on this day? Remember, very important to get enough protein to build muscle. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal two cheese and onion rolls and a bagel, and some watermelon clear away from my protein. And so for breakfast, he's eating a bowl of cereal and a half a bagel and some kind of a bready cheese onion roll. And he's having a small amount of whey protein from my protein. It's not enough. You gotta up your protein. And the first thing you're doing in the morning is going for cardio. Guess what that's gonna do? It's gonna tear down your muscles. You need to lift weights. If you wake up and don't eat enough calories and you go for a run and you burn all those calories off, how are you building muscle? So we took Jack through his base starting point measurements and tests. His bench is at 30 kilos for two reps. Easy. And so he's bulking on a budget. He doesn't have a lot of money, but he needs to eat more calories. His goal is to get in 3,000 calories a day. Many of you can relate to this. You don't have a lot of money. You need to eat, and you need to eat high-quality protein. He gets his strength tested. He's beginning bench press. It's 30 kilograms for two reps. That's 67 pounds. It's not a big bench press, but remember, you have to start somewhere. And so his personal best was one rep. And so he's literally gone from one rep with that weight to two. So he is clearly making gains. And the squad, 40 kilograms for two reps. It's about 89 pounds. He's getting it for two repetitions. At this point, Jack couldn't do any chin-ups, but that is something to come. And chin-ups, he does a zero chin-up. There's a meme going around. How many chin-ups can the average female do? And they're asking and they're thinking like four and 10 and so on. I'm like thinking, are you kidding? The average man can't do a chin-up. Of course, the answer is zero. And then the girls go in and they show themselves doing four or five, even 10 chin-ups. Listen, most people cannot do a chin-up. Many people can't even do a single push-up. And so if you can't do a chin-up, you can't do a push-up, there's still hope for you. You have to start somewhere. Everyone's starting point is different. Some people who have amazing genetics, it's easy. They can perhaps do a chin-up when they're three years of age. I've seen little children doing chin-ups with their friends hanging on to them. These kids are strong. They have amazing genetics. Obviously, they also work hard, but they're clearly gifted genetics. Press-ups. He smashed up four oh, reps. Try and get a ball off. Nice, Jack. Nice flat body. Let's go again. Come on. Up. Push, 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 push. And so he does four push-ups of which none of them count. And so I don't know why they're getting to do this. If you can't do a regular push-up, what you do is you do push-ups from your knees. When I was a physical education teacher, I used to get kids to do push-ups all the time. Many of the kids could never do a single push-up. And so I'd say, hey, you have your choice. You can do push-ups from your knees or if you're advanced, if you're stronger than last time, you can do 
full on push ups on your feet. And so if you're trying to be nice and saying, yeah, you got four push ups, it's a PR, great job, but you're not even going half the way down and you're touching the floor with your knees on each rep, then why bother? Would you not rather know, hey, look, you can't do a push up right now? That's okay. Eventually, we're going to do it. You're going to do push ups for your knees. We're going to count how many knee push ups can you do? And if you can't do knee push ups, of which I also had people not do, you do wall push ups. You lean against the wall. You push and you push back. There are modifications you can do for everything. If you go to yoga and you can't do a downward doggy or you can't do the puppy pose, you can do a more beginner pose. Everyone has the option. You don't have to be advanced. And nailed three calories on the row for his power test. 20 seconds. Nice. There we go. Two. Three. And so his max power, he can burn off three calories in 20 seconds. That's nine calories per minute or 540 calories in an hour. That's with him sprinting all out harder than last time. He can put out 540 calories. And so if he increases in strength, increases his cardio, that is going to go up. And so it's very motivating to see what your starting point is and then measure it later on, perhaps a month later or a year later and see just how much have you improved. Current calories for you, about 3,000. Guaranteed he's not eating 3,000. If you think this kid weighing 120 something pounds is eating 3,000 calories a day, which is close to what I eat, how many of you think he's actually eating that? People have no idea how many calories they're actually eating. Many people overestimate, underestimate. People have no clue what they're actually eating. And so he says it's really important shopping in a budget when you're bulking is to eat high calorie dense foods. That's foods with a lot of calories that don't take a lot of space. Think of it. If all he's eating is salads, how is he going to eat enough calories? And also he needs to take in enough protein and he needs to take in quality protein that's healthy, but that doesn't cost a lot. Hey, pay, bananas, pay, clear honey, all natural, 90p for a kilo. 39p, can't argue that. 12 large eggs, 269, Jeez. one, two, three, four, five, I'm not good at math, so. And so really looking at what they're getting, it's not the healthiest of diet. Some of the things are good, but is it really all that healthy to add in jams loaded in sugar? I don't think that just adding in a lot of sugar is a healthy way to add calories to your diet. Now, things that are more calorie dense, like peanut butter, that seems to make sense. But adding in honey and jams and so on, lots of condiments, and where you just gonna add barbecue sauces and ketchups to get in all those calories? Not that healthy. What you wanna do is add in a lot of fats. Fats have nine calories per gram in comparison to four calories per gram for carbs and or protein. And so if you're eating a lot of peanut butter and nuts and so on, you're gonna get a ton of calories. And so his choice of protein, eggs, gonna be very cheap in comparison to other foods. And his choice of carbs, one of which is bagels, very high calorie dense foods. This is gonna help him to eat a lot of calories without being full. What some people do is go so high on calories that they just put, end up putting on loads of body fat. And so he points out many people, they go on a bulk and they eat way too many calories. If your maintenance is 2,500 calories and you suddenly eat 4,000, it's too much. All you're gonna be putting on is fat. The goal is not to him to get fat. The goal is for him to put on muscle. If you're in a calorie surplus, you're going to put on muscle. Whether it's 100 calories, 200 calories, 500 calories, any of those is going to be enough for you to put on muscle. And so one of his great points of advice is to cook in bulk. Many people think, I can't cook five meals a day. It's too much work. I agree. It's too much work. And so why not cook it all at once? Cook the entire week's meals at one single time. The rice, dead easy, bulk buy, 52. How, how much you getting there? One Kilo. kg. 5p, 500 grams. 500 grams. Easy. I put that on there as well as I haven't put any red meat on. And so other choices of food, the rice and the pasta, these are great choices. Although rice is harder to eat calories than pasta. Remember, you need to choose the foods that are easiest for you to eat. The foods that have the most calories that you find very easy to consume. Chicken, super cheap, can bulk cook that. Bacon, usually super cheap. I'd always recommend getting the higher fat one, same with the mince. And so his suggestions for protein also, he says chicken, very cheap, and mince meat. My advice, pick whatever you want. If you like hamburger, if you like steak, pork chops, chicken, whatever protein source you can afford, please buy that one and eat it in bulk. Two pounds for a chore cheddar, 30 gram servings, so there's lots of servings in there, yeah. I get 69. Next up, he says to add cheese, it's gonna give you a lot of calories, protein, fats, and so on. Also to add butter. Butter, clearly high in fat, not my favorite choice. I would more recommend oils. I do believe oils are healthier than butters, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's not the best of choices, but it is going to give you a lot of calories. And so my opinion, I'd rather see you spreading on some peanut butter onto your bagels than butter, but do what makes you happy. Things into our main meals, such as broccoli or vegetables or a bit of fruit. Yeah. Obviously, one of the big focuses for trying to add size is we want to try and get those 
macronutrients in. And, and so we also suggest don't forget about your micronutrients. You still need to eat vegetables. My suggestion, of course, is to get my freaking cookbook. All the calories are listed for your fruits and vegetables in order. And so if you're trying to bulk, you're going to pick the fruits and vegetables that have the most calories. Think of it. Are you really going to want to eat broccoli and spinach that has very low in calories if you're trying to bulk up? Or would it not make more sense to eat higher calorie fruits and vegetables? And he says you can't go wrong with chicken, broccoli, and rice. Of course you can go wrong if you're trying to bulk and you don't like it and it's hard to get the calories down, of which of course it's going to be. Broccoli has hardly any calories. How are you going to get enough calories? Chicken, broccoli, and rice. He's also eating sweet potatoes. These are very difficult foods to eat on a bulk. They're not as high in calories. These are the things I'd recommend on a cut. And so eating foods on a cut and a bulk, very different. When you're cutting, you're always going to be starving. You're trying to eat foods that are very filling. You're eating low calorie dense foods. When you're in a bulk, you're always trying to make yourself hungry. And so you eat high calorie dense foods. It's the exact opposite. And so does it really make sense to be eating broccoli on both diets? I don't think so. And so please give Jack a follow. Follow Jack for more tips. Follow me for more tips. Remember, if you're looking to put on muscle, you're trying to bulk harder than last time, you can consider a natural method, Acti Builder and Turk Builder. If you're a teenager, don't buy this. You're too young. Wait until you're older. Also, Geo2 Max is going to give you more energy than last time. Interested in any of these supplements or any of my cookbooks, training books, all that stuff, code Greg, 15% off. Click the link in the description. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm, like the video if you liked it, and of course, watch one of those two bloops. If you want coaching plans by me and my team, phone consults, etc., please head over to the website. Of course, if you have no money, head over to the website anyway. Free diet and training programs, close to 50 pages as well. Become one of the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers. And until next time, I am out.